I'm sure you've heard the phrase, timing is everything. Well, when it comes to electronics, it's critical. Every day we rely on timers to get us up out of bed in the morning, prevent our food from being overcooked, and keep us from being late. From digital watches on our wrists to traffic lights on our daily commute, you won't have to look far to find a device that keeps things in order by tracking time. Let's take a look at a, the basic working principle of a timer. So every timer needs a clock signal. Uh, the latest and greatest computers will typically boast of some gigahertz of processing speed. Uh, you may have heard this before, and if you have, you found the clock signal. Measurements in hertz tell us how many times per second a clock signal pulses. So a computer's processor may run at speeds around four gigahertz which translates to four billion pulses every second. Why does this matter for our timers? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now timers need electronic pulses, similar to what the clock signal produces. But this is where a problem arises. Let's say you have a 16 megahertz processor, which we've learned it equivalates to 16 million pulses per second. But you need the turn signal in your car to just flash once per second or at one hertz. So herein lies the beauty of timers. And we're gonna learn how problems like these can be dealt with. We'll be looking at a, a processor that has speeds up to 32 megahertz. To understand the basic of how this works, we'll, we'll need to learn a few new terms. Terms like timer register, compare register, and prescaler. The timer register keeps count of pulses from the clock signal. The compare register, which is also sometimes referred to as the period register, is constantly comparing its value to the value of the timer register. And lastly, the prescaler. It divides the incoming clock signal by a certain value. To help all this make sense, let's look at an example of how these components work together. We'll be accessing the memory of this processor by writing a few lines of code. Once we load the software, we can quickly confirm that our software works properly by checking the output of our LED. Without going into too much detail about how the software is loaded on the processor, I'll simply show you how we're going to set the values of our timer and compare registers and our prescale. We will set the timer starting value to zero and the compare register to the max possible value. And finally, we're going to set our prescaler to 256. Using the formula shown here, we can get a rough estimate of the frequency in which our LED will blink. After running the numbers on the values we chose, we can expect the LED to blink with a frequency of 1.9 Hz. If you're interested in learning more about the technical side of timers or gadgets, uh, that may seem simple but just have an extensive amount of technology, uh, be sure to subscribe.